Terrigen Bollier, famously known by the ring name Hulk Hogan, was born on 11th August 1953 to Pietro Bollier and dance teacher Ruth V. Bollier in Augusta, Georgia. However, his family moved to Port Tampa, Florida when he was a year and a half. Hogan started out in sport as a pitcher in Little League Baseball and watching professional wrestlers from the age of 16, where his favorite wrestler was Dusty Rhodes. To get himself engaged in the game, Hogan began attending cards at the Tampa Sportatorium. He found inspiration in Billy Graham, desiring to have the inhuman look of the superstar. Before he attended the Hillsboro Community College and the University of South Florida, Hogan had started a career in music, playing fretless bass guitar in several Florida-based rock bands for almost a decade. But when the gig started clashing with his studies, he decided to drop out of the university and never received his degree. Hogan formed the Rukos Band with two other musicians in 1976. They became a popular sensation in the Tampa Bay region. He also worked at the gym where he spent his spare time body lifting. It was then that he came in contact with Briscoe brothers who were first impressed with his physical stature. They introduced him to Hiro Matsuda who trained wrestlers for championship matches. The Briscoe brothers encouraged Hogan to try wrestling in the same year which he eventually agreed to and made his debut professional wrestling against Brian Blair in 1977 at the CWF match. To solidify his new career, he dressed in a mask. He took the persona of the Super Destroyer, a character that was first played by Don Jardine. After a few matches which he mostly lost, Hogan left the CWF after he declined to wrestle for the Kansas City circuit. He returned to co-managing the Anchor Club in Beach, Florida with his friend Bridges. They also opened a gym. But Hogan's love for wrestling could not be appeased by his new venture. He became depressed and yearned to go back to his wrestling life. He then joined the Louis Tillett, Alabama Territory. He encouraged his friend Leslie, who had come to Cocoa Beach to help Hogan manage Anchor Club, to join him in wrestling, promising to teach Leslie what he knew about the sports. Hogan succeeded and recruited Leslie into wrestling and became known as the Boulder Brothers, with Leslie being called Ed and Hogan, Terry. Fans were deceived by this to think they were real brothers. They were offered a job by Jerry Jarrett, the promoter of the Continental Wrestling Association CWA, for $800 a week to wrestle in his promotion, which was way above the $175 they received a week at Tillett. They took the offer and left Tillett's territory. While at the local talk show with Lou Ferrigno, a star of the television series The Incredible Hawk, it was noticed that Hogan was standing like a hawk above Lou. He was then referred to as the Hawk. After that time, he started going by the name Tarek the Hawk Boulder and sometimes as Sterling Golden. Hogan won his first professional wrestling championship on 1st December 1979 at the NWA Southeastern Heavyweight Championship. Later that month, Hogan was introduced to Vincent McMahon by former NWA World Heavyweight Champion Terry Funk. Vince was impressed with Hogan's charisma and physical structure and signed Hogan to the WWF. In 1980, Hogan won his first WWF match against Harry Valdez on Championship Wrestling. He also had his first televised appearance against Ed DeBiaz, whom he defeated at Madison Square Garden. After then, Hogan began appearing at the New Japan Pro Wrestling and was nicknamed Ichiban by his Chinese fans. He toured Japan over the next few years, winning against a wide range of opponents with his wrestling moves and repertoire and maneuvers, which were more technical and traditional than the American brawling style. All the while, he was still signed to WWF. Hogan took a role in the film Rocky III in 1981 against Vince's wishes. At the same time, he made his debut at American Wrestling Association. In 1982, after Vince purchased the company from his father, he expanded the territory of WWF into a nationwide promotion. He fronted Hogan as a centerpiece attraction because of his name recognition and charisma. He had wanted Hogan to dye his hair red, but Hogan refused, stating that he would rather be a blonde Hogan. Hogan returned to a television taping at his defeat of Bill Dyson in 1983. Hogan's character became a subject of comparison in 1984 when it was compared to the Incredible Hulk, leading to a quit claim deal between Hogan and Marvel Comics and Titan Sports, with Marvel's trademarking Hulkster, 
Hulk Hogan and Hulkamania for 20 years. Hogan became the face of WWF, promoting professional wrestling for Vince into a pop culture enterprise and increasing television ratings. He was also named the most demanded Make-A-Wish Foundation celebrity of the 1980s. He became the first wrestler to be featured on the cover of Sport Illustrated and People's Magazine. He also appeared on The Tonight Show, anchoring his own CBS Saturday morning cartoon titled Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. After holding the WWF World Heavyweight Champion for four years, he lost the title to Andre in front of 33 million viewers. But later that night, he won his fifth WWF Championship after he pinned Yokozuna. Also, defeating the Great Muta IWGP Heavyweight Champion at the Dontaku Wrestling Match. Hogan left WWF and signed with WCW in 1994 at a ceremony held at Disney MGM Studios, appearing the next month on a television match where he won his debut match against Ric Flair. Over the next two years, Hogan lost and won several matches on at the WCW. In an episode of Nitro on 4th August 1997, he lost the title to Luger by submission. He feuded with Luger five days later, defeating him at the Road Wild match to regain the WCW World Heavyweight Championship. Again, Hogan lost the title to Sting in a Starcade match. After winning back the title, he was again defeated by Goldberg, who interfered at Hogan and Malone's match. He spent 1998 wrestling celebrity matches and at the Thanksgiving episode of The Tonight Show with Jay Leno, Hogan announced that he was retiring from professional wrestling and also for the office of the President of the United States. But he returned two years later in 2009 with a match at Bash at the Beach on 9th August against Jeff Jarrett of the WCW World Heavyweight Championship where it had been agreed that he should take the belt. Although Russo secretly wanted to give the title to Jarrett and later lose it to Booker T, things, however, did not turn out as Hogan had planned with Russo revealing there that Hogan had been determining how his matches went. Hogan went on to win the match and immediately took the WCW title belt and left the ring. However, he later sued Russo and the WCW for defamation of character. After this event, Hogan left WCW and began his own new world order NWO and fought matches under his new promotion where he both defeated and was won. He was then inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame, class of 2005 by Sylvester Stallone, and in 2009, he resigned the contract to join TNA as a full-time wrestler. However, he announced that he was the new owner of TNA on an episode of Impact after he defeated Dixie Carter, but was later defeated by Sting at Bound for Glory match. Hogan returned to WWE where he lost matches. His contract was terminated in 2015 for no apparent reason except that he was not conforming to their rules. However, WWE stated that they were committed to embracing wrestlers from all backgrounds but Hogan's lawyer said he was chosen to resign instead. In 2019, 9th December, Hogan was inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame under the New World Order. Besides his life of wrestling, Hogan established a restaurant pasta mania at the Hall of America, Minnesota. He also endorsed the blender known as the Hulk Hogan Thunder Mixer, a grill known as the Hulk Hogan Ultimate Grill. He obeyed the Hogan Energy Drink. He also launched a website which he called Hogan Nutrition and featured several nutritional and dietary products. He was featured and starred in a few films including No Holds Bird, Ultimate Weapon, Family Films, Suburban Commando, Santa with Muscles, Three Ninjas and his own television series Thunder in Paradise and has a net worth of $25 million. Thank you very much for watching our videos. We'll appreciate it if you subscribe to our channel and share this video with your friends. We love you.